Hey everyone, Max at 343 Labs here. We're a music production school based in New York City, Berlin, and online. And today, I'd like to show you a clip by one of our instructors, the one and only John Selway, which is taken from his weekly stream, which airs right here on our channel. Now, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification below. Let's get into it. And I always like the, the DS kick. It's like as a 909 like or 808 like kick or somewhere in between. It's got just enough controls and it's got, because it's an oscillator, right? It's constantly changing slightly. Even when you use the phase retrigger, Right, you get a little bit more of a pop on the transient with the with the phase retrigger button. It's starting the waveform over at the same position every time. But even then, there's still a little tiny bit of drift. So it's got that kind of evolution in the sound that even on a small level, like one drum, you know, it can make a big difference overall. It all adds up. Nice. Okay. And then started with that. And then the next sort of idea was using a using a synthetic percussion sound is like more than just a percussion sound. So, you know, we have this little clang, DS clang, which is basically doing like cowbells, like electronic cowbell sound. Um, and with a, with a del filter delay on there, I mean, that's literally like the, the default, almost it's just the default. I think I adjusted some levels in the filters a little bit, but. And then, again, nothing new, but thinking of this from a beginner perspective, like just get, making sure from the beginning you have the concept of a sound that you can play with and it's evolving. And that, you know, and sometimes some styles of techno, that could be most of your track right there, depending on how you play it. So simple stuff, but uh, I also like that there's this little, uh, it's, it's called a clave, clave, and when you tune it up higher, it sounds like a clave, but now it sounds like, I don't know, a, a sort of a different variation, those two layers. on It's like an 808 cowbell, because you can hear the different tune, the notes, the, the high and the low pitches. And we can tune it. All these things that we can play with and automate. And I always like to build, I'll build up a drum kit while I'm writing the song. So like, what's the next thing I want to hear in my arrangement? Okay, probably a hi-hat. Let's get rid of that clave layer. Could probably bring that in as an arrange, uh, using automation as an arrangement element later on. And then, okay, more hi-hats. Right, already just playing with the sounds and it's like jamming around. More sub, a little more decay on that kick drum. Well, that might be a little overwhelming, so. Let's dial back that clang again. Make it more like a short percussion sound mixed in with the hi-hats. We talked about layers of, you know, different frequency layers for different sounds like brighter versus darker and how they interact together. But then I thought about, you know, what next? What else could I use? And this is this is most of what we covered in our little bit of a lesson. And I took this home and I thought, what else do I want to do? And I started going through some chord stabs. It just, uh, and this was another idea of like not getting too fussy about designing all your sounds. You know, so there's on the one side, you're looking for sounds that you can play with. So whether it's samples plus effects or a synth or something where you can, that's, you can tweak around, um, but also just to come up with interesting rhythmic patterns with different types of sounds that aren't just drums. And so, you know, I went through and found some little chord stabs and things and, um, we were checking out, this isn't exactly hard groove kind of techno, but that's one of the things we talked about is how do you make these kind of funky syncopated grooves in, but you know, with, with, with the hard groove stuff and you know, there's a lot of chopped up samples and, you know, layered 
drum loops and things like that. Um, I kind of went more in the direction. Of, I like it when you do those little like sequences of call and response chord stabs and things like that. Um, let's see. So I started looking just for some other strange percussion sounds. Like I found this little, you know, these are all literally out of the live library. Like this, this is all stuff you could like, if you own the suite, you could, most of these sounds you could get for free just from the packs, right? Just going through and randomly picking stuff that caught my ear. And I like that. It's kind of like a synthy percussion sound. Nothing too complicated. Talked about the idea of like, you know, again, not, not a new concept to all of you, but finding easily finding interesting patterns by choosing notes that are not quarter notes, right? So just add in a syncopated, just like a one shot syncopated thing. So even just that, and that's not going to be the full pattern because then I'm going to add in other sounds that call and response with that. Let's go back to the original idea. And then I found this kind of dark, filtery chord. And that's actually, I think that was, yeah, it's from a loop. I put it in the simpler and put it in slice mode. And I just randomly, almost randomly just hit a couple different notes to get a subtle variation. And, you know, you could do this in a more complex way. You could load up a synth and play a chord and automate the filter and, or whatever parameters, but this is faster, right? And it's sort of, sort of taking a loop and deconstructing it into something new. I'm not done with this yet. Like this probably could use a little sound shaping, filtering. Actually, I did put a filter on it because it's less bright. Um, effects, mixing, things like that. Uh, this is interesting. All right, Dobsky. Welcome, Dobsky. I think that's a new name for us. Uh, oh, Kick 2 is your go-to. Um, but then Marcus is saying, uh, can't handle it too many controls. So yeah, Kick 2 is great. It's more powerful than something like the DS Kick because it's got multiple layers and more complex envelopes. And it's really good if you want to get into deep sound design for kicks. But, you know, I don't think you necessarily need that for this style of techno. I feel like a little more raw and simplified is, is it makes sense. And, you know, again, this kick is more like what you'd get straight out of a 909 or other similar analog drum machine. Um, kick 2 is going to give you more power. Um, the D16 uh, kick drum synthesizer is also really great in terms of more we, I mean, we've used this on the stream before but uh let's see if i can where did it go <laughs> i swear i have it um punch box right yeah punch box is like definitely a lot i i i imagine uh marcus would be uh, also a little bit overwhelmed because it's a lot but it, it, it sounds really good hey kev human how's it going nice to have you uh Noah Pred should come back. He's a regular. Uh, I mean, and full disclosure, he's also a 343 Labs instructor. So we, we, we like to, whenever he's doing something new with his Manifest Audio project, we have him on to talk about it because we like him. And uh, so, yeah, he's part of the crew. He will definitely, definitely be back. Uh, yeah, I saw he's got some new, new, new devices that are, uh, it's sonification of data. So uh, interesting, uh, another way of, you know, kind of, it's not random, but like, uh, you're, you're finding patterns in, in numbers and making music out of it. I think that's great. So, um, hey, Element, wouldn't mind them making a new punch box. I feel like I don't love the interface of punch box. I, I would like it, you know, to be a little bit more, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's, what, what's it, is it skeuomorphic or the, the, this, the design where you're making it look like it's hardware, but it's not, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not as into that kind of interface as I am like a, de a, a design that's meant for, like a user interface that's meant for a computer screen, right? Rather than looking like knobs and buttons on a hardware. But that doesn't stop me from using their plugins. I still like them. Um, my society says steam, steampunk. Yeah, it could be a little, it'd be nice if it was a little more slick and modern, even, even with the, the, the knobs and buttons and, and 3D elements and things like that. All right, so let's get back to the groove. But just to kind of, let's, let's go back to just the kick drum here for a second. And the important thing for me with these 
elements that I'm adding, these sort of more chord-like or synth-like elements that are still rhythmic on top of what the, the basic drum groove is doing. Although already the basic drum groove is more than that because it's got that synthy note from the, the, the metallic sound, right? That's a little bit more like a, a, a lead element for a techno track. So there's some crossover. But these guys, I'm, trying, I'm consciously trying to make a call and response uh, where there's this, it's all a bunch of individual notes and sounds that add up into a more complex rhythmic groove. So they're kind of going back and forth. So you can kind of see, if I select both of those MIDI clips, you can see how those two clips interrelate to each other. Two different sounds creating a melody. And then we added this one. Okay, that's like a, this is just a drum loop. So that, you know, we, we, that's just the one example that we came up with in the, in the lesson where you just find an interesting drum loop and throw it in there with your other drums. Like, I'll get this question, like people will be in class and say, hey, you know, is it cool if I like use drum loops and program drum beats and put them together? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. Please do that. Like, do your kick, do your snare, do your hi-hat, do your basic beat, and then experiment with layering other types of rhythms together. It's also kind of inspiring to do it that because if you're still learning how to get the right kind of sounds and do the detailed drum program, you know, you can make a drum kit, like a MIDI drum kit, sound like a real drummer with the right sounds or have the, exp even if it's electronic, you can have the expression of like an intricate drum groove played by a human by velocity and tonal like manipulation and things like that. But um, it's, if you're a beginner, that's daunting. So, you know, you can find an interesting like percussion loop or funk loop or whatever, and then layer that with the, your own beat. And that's kind of exciting because it sounds more polished and more complex, just like that. So this was just a little, another little kind of percussion loop that I, I was going to use more of it, but I ended up just using one quarter note of it. It has this little snare in there. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the backbeat or not. That's always a thing for me, like with techno. We've talked about this before, whether I want this, the snare on the two and the four. And I'm sure that some of you out there have uh, opinions about this. Also, this is, it's a, this is a very like kind of a tight acoustic sounding snare. I, I kind of want something noisier maybe if I do use a snare. So I ended up just doing this. All right, another chord stab ended up coming in. And this one's a little more sustained and moody. I was trying to balance this like syncopated sharp energy with something deeper and smoother as a contrast. So, so it's a little bit organ like, and it's slightly housey. I, I acknowledge that, but this is another thing we've talked about before. I like when techno has house in it and house has techno in it, but I'm not necessarily saying tech house either. Like that's as a genre with quotes around it. I just mean there's always cool, interesting elements of different genres mixed together, and this one works for me. Maybe it, it does get a little moody. Elements uh, mentioning how what's amazing about Ableton going through a loop folder while the track is playing and previewing it seamlessly. Like, that's another thing I like to encourage people to do is don't. Hit st I'm hitting stop because I'm talking to you and like making a point. But a lot of times when I make music and I'm not like streaming and I'm just in the zone, I don't even hit the space bar. I just let it play. If I'm trying to get that hypnotic groove going and I want to get into that groove and I just don't stop unless I absolutely have to. So like, you know, Wrong loop, but that's the idea, right? I don't even think you guys can hear that. <laughs> Let's make sure you can hear that. I don't mind that, actually. You know, shakers almost always work somehow. Hey, Aaron, what's up? Controversial or uncontroversial opinion? Tech house as a genre used to be great until the EDM kitties in the U.S. took over the genre. It wasn't just the U.S. I think it's global. I would put some blame on the UK and Europe uh, and everywhere. There, it's just the genre of, t I blame Beatport, not to, to completely knock Beatport, you know, it's, they're just responding to the market, but like, uh, you know, the Beatport tech house, uh, section definitely changed <laughs> things at a certain point 
But yeah, deep, early tech house, totally cool with that. All right. Um, I don't know, just because I kind of didn't mind that shaker loop and we were talking about how easy it is to just throw in a loop and just keep going. I'm gonna throw it in there and we can always get rid of it later if we don't love it. All right. I also hear a lot of times, and, and again, this wasn't meant to be hard groove. It isn't quite yet. If it is, I have to like make it more tough and chunky probably and do some different kinds of beats. But part of the concept of, of that was like finding little vocal chops and little chord stabs and things. And so this is another, and, and I, I like using, I like having vocals that don't repeat too much that just kind of come in subtly a little bit. I do have one that's sort of repeating. It's like a little grunt and it's filtered so you can barely tell what it is. And again, it's it's still fitting in with that syncopated call and response. So it's, they're all adding up to create a complete phrase. Everything's got its own little spot in the pocket, in that kind of syncopated pocket along with the kick drum. Hey, what's up? Eli Groove Tiger. Kev Human, James Hype has much to answer for. Very fun. You're talking about Tech House, right? Koa Music, that's another new name. Welcome. I considered Timo Ma's Tech House 20 years ago. Now it sounds like the same groovy bass line. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there was, there was more of a... I think like Tech House sort of solidified into more of a slightly commercial genre over the decades. Um, but it was, it was always there and there were different flavors of it, more or less techno or whatever um you must have some good stuff all right get back getting back into the pocket awesome. i want my hi-hats back so i'm doing this and i'm getting this groove going I'm like, all right, I like that big boomy kick drum, but it still doesn't have like a heavy bass thing. It's sort of hollow sounding. And maybe that's how I've mixed the kick. So I decided to go in and create a bass line on, you know, a thick subby sort of sound, fast 16th notes to give it some weight. And I'm not 100% stuck on this bass yet. like. But it serves the purpose, so, you know, it's probably okay. I feel like maybe that chord step, that filtered one is... It needs some effects or something. It's all still pretty dry. We'll, we'll work on that. Let's lose that shaker for a second. It's kind of a, it's actually a nice frequency range that it fits into. Lose that deeper organ kind of chord stab for a second. Every now and then, like a, a reverb throw on a chord stab, that's, that always works, right? I'll definitely do that or something like that in the arrangement, or maybe find another chord stab that complements those, that has a big reverb on it that jumps out every time. Um, like I kind of did, and this was another thing that with my student where we were listening to hard groove stuff and we noticed there were a bunch of, especially classic, but still some new ones that there's a lot of horn stabs in hard groove. Has anybody noticed that? Uh, we were listening to some old player tracks from the nineties and the new stuff that's sort of similar to that, but modern and a little more, a little faster. Cause a lot of the stuff is fast now. Like I'm doing this one at 139. Um, and, uh. Let's see. I I was like, do I have? I just typed horn stab to see what would come up in in my library because I don't think I have a lot of horn stabs. But we had that, which is very classic, like soul funk, you know, sixties, seventies, right? And that you'd hear, right? So I just decided to use it, and it's okay. It's got like the record crackle in it, and it's very vintage sounding. So I wanted to figure out how to make it sound a little fuller. Um, but just starting with this. Mm. 
and you can see it's not happening every bar or anything. I've, I've got a long, you know, I've got a 16 bar pattern or loop, and it just comes in every now and then with a big reverb on it. And it's a little cheesy, I acknowledge, but I like that kind of cheese. But I wanted it to be a little more shiny and polished, and so I decided to do some pitch shifting to create a more complex chord. So just using live grain delay, because again, one of the, the sort of things about this lesson, we were limiting ourselves just to uh, uh, live devices. And, you know, I, this is something I did on my own later, right? We, I, I threw the chord stab in there when, we were, when I was demonstrating to the student, but then I was like, I wanted to polish this up. This is a little bit more advanced uh, audio effect and sound design than, than I think the student is ready for. Um, but it's still cool. So let's look at it. So I've got, you know, I'm just stacking that up using the grain delay to do some pitch shifting. And it's also giving a little stereo imaging. So there's like, a, you know what, let's make this easier to play. I'm going to go ahead and right. So it's tuned down. I could have, there's a million ways I could have done this. I could have thrown this into a sampler and played a chord. Right, I could so I, I it's over complex in a way, but you know it's the process, right? It led me in a particular direction, and I went with it. So there's one that's tuned down, minor third, and then a, and a fourth or five semitones, and then all together, right? It's just making a big, thicker, more rich harmony. And I thought that sounded better, right? And there's a lot of reverb on it, but I like it. So let's see, how does that sound all together? I've got it. All right. We've got a technical issue. Let's see if we can figure it out. Stereo decor. John, can you please switch off that solo button on the master? The sound is doubling in an unpleasant way. Well, I'm sorry about that. Normally, it shouldn't be doing that. All right. I might, I wonder, I might, I know what happened. I know exactly what happened. I think I, when I changed the cue output, I meant to change the cue output and I set the master out to the wrong, I, I, I did the wrong output. It should, let me know if it's fixed now. Let me know if you, you hear any doubling anymore. Is that doubling? Give me a give me a thumbs up in the chat if it sounds okay. No doubling now. Yeah. So thanks uh, thanks for pointing that out. That was me being dumb. That was I, I I meant to put the cue out to tracks five and six, and I put the master out to five and six. And uh, the way I have this, you don't need to know this, but I have this custom you know rack where I have one output going over the main outputs to my speakers, and then the stream is getting a separate. Uh, output and this is not this one's not mixed in with what I couldn't even hear the doubling right so you can see that's what happened is that I sent the signal twice so they love you we figured it out and we fixed it nice all right we got the big chord stab in there And it kind of gives it like a positive vibe, which I, you know, at first I was like, do I want that? Do I want it to be like happy sounding? And you know what? Yes, because so much techno is dark and serious and I love that and I do it myself. But um, I think it's good to like, you know, you need a light and dark side of the force, right? So this was the light side and I'm thinking, all right, let it be that. You know, I think hard, a hard groove style kind of syncopated thing with the chords is what started it going that way. And then having that big kind of positive sounding horn stab on top of it really takes it there. Um, you know, so it's more, it's more or less, it's techno, but it's like a slightly different flavor, right? Than if I were to keep it darker. So that's it's I'm seem to be going in this kind of harmonic direction with this groove. It's got, you know, if I strip it down again, right? I could take this in a totally different direction. Let's get rid of all the the happy sounding stuff or the more positive vibe stuff, right? This is more neutral. Right? That's more like I could make this go in a darker direction now. And if I just sort of play around with the clang sound and just keep it more stripped down. 
Oh, I forgot. I also have this little random vocal sample that I threw in with some delay on it. Just to occasionally throw in some human element there. Simply nice. Yes, add some bass with the kick. All right, so again, this isn't a finished mix yet, and we have there is a lot of bass. There is a lot of bass. If you look at my... You know, if we check out what's going on in the spectrum here, like that's a lot of low end right there. Could there be more maybe? And there's a lot of sub in this sound. So yeah, that's, I'm, I'm going to work all that out in the mix. I was even playing around before with like, right, that's not helping. I hard I don't know. Do, do, do you guys use this instrument, this this bass Max for Live device in live? I feel like it's kind of not commonly used. I don't know. But one thing I do know is that it has a really thick compressed sound. I mean, look how there's a there's distortion built into it. Everything that comes out of this thing, it doesn't sound particularly dynamic. It sounds like really squashed. And that can be good. That can be bad. All right. So, you know, there needs to, there's some work here to be done in the balance of this. I haven't done any side chaining. I haven't done any like crazy EQ or, I mean, just a little bit, right? Just to kind of get started. And that's all going through. Well, yeah, I guess there is a bunch of, of, of processing going on here because there's the EQ and there's the saturation. Could make it really hard if I drive it. Jamie Johnson's asking, where do you get the 808 clang? Yeah, we looked, up, we looked at that earlier in the stream when I was just showing the sort of how from the beginning. This is the, uh, the DS clang. This is one of the DS drum synths that's included with live. And then we also have this. It's like an extra layer of a clave sound in there. Cool, it's got some little grainy kind of details in there too. Jan Kalinowski says maybe a dark evolving drone, huh? So yeah, we, you know, I, it's interesting. We could totally take this basic groove and go in another direction. That's what I was just saying, right? I've got all this happy stuff and the horn stabs. Um, there's only, I think there's only one more sound that I was fooling around with that I wasn't sure about. I was just, you know, it, it, it started as uh, just demonstrating a really simple like analog lead kind of one note pattern, but then it got weird. I did some weird stuff with the detuning of the unison and looping envelope. And I don't know if this is really working or not. We'll see. It's got this kind of buzzy thing. It's like I was listening to this in the background for a little bit. And I was like, it's like bees in my ears or something. It's like a cluster of weird robotic insects. And it needs effects, it's really dry. But yeah, again, totally different vibe than doing all those, uh, the chord stabs and everything. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, we put out new content every week. So don't forget to check back often. And if you'd like to learn more about music production and take a course with us, or just join our community, come check us out at 343labs.com. See you next time.